Right. Along the uh, coast of the United Kingdom, there are a whole load of what I would call old Victorian watering holes, um, which made their or had their day when uh, um, the railway started up around right about 1840-1850, um, bringing holidaymakers to the coast. Um, and a lot of them still have the sort of architecture which uh, was built at around about that sort of time, around about the turn of the last century. Um, this is uh, Frinton-on-Sea on the east coast. I used to live as a boy um, at Dovercourt and Harwich um, back in the, the 50s and 60s and um, we would go on day trips to places like Walton, um, on the Nays, Frinton-on-Sea, Clacton uh, and so forth. Um, and this is uh, a rather interesting Victorian um, shelter come clock uh, at Frenton. It's on the top of the hill overlooking the sea at Frenton. Um, and you can see sort of typical Victorian architecture, um, especially with this building behind it. Um, gorgeous um, architecture. Um, and along that coast and along the south coast and so on as well you'll find all sorts of examples of uh, wonderful buildings to draw and paint. Um, this one uh, that I've chosen for this, this, uh, this painting as I say is particularly interesting. It has this sort of round conical roof with quite a large uh, clock tower on top of it, uh, the shelter below, uh, in the middle of um, a grass um, uh, play area. Um, but what I want to do with this painting is to keep the attention on the main subject matter, the, the shelter itself, but include <coughs> excuse me, some of the, um, the background as well, but not that right back so that the full attention um, of the observer is kept on, on the shelter. I'm going to do the shelter in pen and wash um, and I'm going to use three or four basic um, Winsor Newton colours, um, burnt sienna, some burnt umber, cobalt blue, um, and uh, some yellow ochre, uh, and so forth, um, and some Pigma uh, inking pens at the same time. Maybe a little touch of fountain pen to give me my nice um, uh, shadows underneath this, 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 this top. And I'm going to include these two people as well because they give a sense of scale um, in, uh, into the painting. Um, so the first thing I've done is drawn it in pencil. And you can see I've gone sort of fairly heavy on the shelter itself to, to define that. This lovely building behind, which I take as either a, a hotel or um, an old folks home or whatever, um, I've drawn it sort of fairly accurately but um, not put in too much detail and what I'm going to do is I'm going to define that mainly by uh, different colours and tones and so forth and then um, rub out a lot of the pencil work so you just get this sort of feeling of a shape behind the main uh, focal point. So the first thing to do is, having drawn it in pencil, is to um, go over and uh, use the ink and as with my usual technique I'm pretty sketchy um, I'm not too worried about following all the lines completely accurately it's just to emphasize the shapes here um, I want it to be quite loose I don't go over every pencil line um, necessarily. Some I like to lose. As I say, with all paintings, it's a good idea to have busy areas and also fairly relaxed areas too. So areas which are highly accurate and, and uh, well defined by drawing lines and so forth, and other areas which are more relaxed, less defined perhaps. Dials are always a bit difficult because they form 
in three dimensions like this they form ellipses which are um, not always that easy to to define draw once I got to this stage I won't go um, and do the whole lot for the film but um, just to show you the thick and thin line technique that I use so that's a 0.1 um, Pigma uh, pen here's a 0.5 and I don't go over all the outside lines but just some of them to help emphasize the shape this is a bit of what they call as say the thick and thin line technique and the thick and thin line technique uh, of of shading um, basically says that any line which is um, touching one particular surface or one plane or whatever is thick so that line there is fairly thick any line which um, touches two surfaces so um, <clears throat> this line here this corner it touches that surface and that surface it's an internal line you leave thin uh, now that's a graphics uh, technique it's quite effective I don't follow it all the time because if you do you just go end up going all around the outside with a thick line and that doesn't look good either so you've got to be a, a bit judicial about how you apply these rules okay so I'm going to leave as I say the building behind uh, in pencil this is as far as I'm going to go uh, with the, the inking um, you can see that most of it's been done with the, the thin 0.1 or 0.2 uh, micron uh, pen and just some of these outside lines, these corners um, are uh, put in with a heavier pen, 0.5 and I've also used a Lamy fountain pen too um, just to uh, go over some of the thicker lines here we go, uh, Lamy pen uh, with non-waterproof ink and I've done that on this side. This side of the, the building is going to be um, in shadow. In other words, the light is coming from the right-hand side. And I want to let this bleed a little bit to produce a, a nice, um, a nice soft, warm, uh, dark shadow area. So I use the uh, black ink in the fountain pen uh, to help me do that. Um, and you can see, as I said, that the uh, building at the back end here um, is left in pencil. I will be rubbing out some of those pencil lines later on and defining that with uh, with paint more than anything else. Uh, it's going to be a little vignette so we're going to do concentrate uh, mainly on uh, the uh, the shelter, um, connect the shapes together um, and um, leave it as a very simple little uh, painting. So the painting won't take uh, very long at all. Now I've got two figures there, one standing up walking towards the um, uh, the shelter and one already sitting down and I'm just going to um, define them first of all uh, because it's very easy when you're painting uh, with um, when you've got figures there too to lose the figures because you don't leave enough light around them so I'm just going to establish those a little bit of uh, Naples yellow there for um, uh, the faces Naples yellow with a little touch of um, of red perhaps. I'm just going to use some pen's grey to uh, just establish this one here. A little more dark down that side because of the, sh the effect of light and shadow. Um, shapes, um, the burnt umber for the, for the hair. What I'm going to try and do is as I'm painting I'm going to try and leave some light around those figures um, so they don't get lost.
Okay, so that's them. They're established within the uh, the painting. Right. Um, so I'm going to start on the reef roof area. Strangely enough, with this um, particular um, shelter, the main roof is conical, circular, and the roof at the top of the uh, the clock tower is uh, in four sides. So. Um, it's a slightly strange design there, but um, there we go, that's uh, Victorian design. So I'm using Balenciaga just to get this going. I'm working on the dark side of this roof. This is a lovely colour, Winsor Newton Burnt Sienna. And because the light's coming from the right hand side here, I'm just going to use some water just to bring that out. What I tend to do when working from well, photographs or real life is to emphasize contrast. So where um, you've got light and dark, actually make the lighter, the, the, the light areas lighter and the darker areas darker than you might actually see. And that gives you the, the ability to make this lovely three dimensional effect. So I'm just going to, whilst that's wet, drop in a little bit of burnt umber there, just to Now the white work around the clock and so forth, um, on the shadow side I'm going to put in just a little bit of very very light cobalt blue. I'll leave the other side facing the light. White. The clock face itself is sort of silvery grey, bluey grey, silver grey. So a little bit of cobalt blue and a little bit of burnt umber. Same again on the light side, but maybe just a little bit lighter, or a little bit bluer perhaps. Now I'm just touching that fountain pen ink there, and you can see how it's bleeding out, giving this lovely soft shadow effect. Um, the, some of the woodwork is blue in colour so I'll just put that in. It's actually more a cerulean blue in the photograph than, than I've got here. This is cobalt blue but uh, I'm not going to worry too much about that. And again you can see the blue touching the fountain pen there Pad of pen ink, and you get this lovely. Well, I, I think anyway, that's a lovely uh, um, shadow effect. And we've got this dark area underneath the cone roof. So a bit of burnt umber, 
the cobalt blue. A little lighter on the right hand side there because of the light coming in. So we're beginning to get there now. Um, use a narrower brush. Just going to paint in very often with windows. I tend to just paint when you've got loads of panes, paint them all in one go. Um, but here there's a little bit of white work that you see, a bit of definition, so I'm just going to stroke some of those in, not all of them, just to give the effect there of some white paint work. Quite sketchy. There's a very dark margin around the bottom, so put that in too. And you can see right through to the other side of this shelter, so one or two windows just need to be blanked in a little bit. Some left open. That's good. So we're getting to the stage now where actually most of the painting is done. Certainly of the, uh, the shelter. A little bit of yellow uh, ochre in here. And then dark underneath for the shadow areas. It's contrast, the difference in values between tones that uh, give you that realistic three-dimensional feel. Um, I'll come back to that again uh, in a minute. What I'm going to do now is just some very, very light Very, very light work on the, um, the building behind. Constantly comparing what I'm putting on here with what I've got on the bandstand or the, uh, not bandstand, the um, shelter. So that I don't detract. Or take away from the main focal point.
and not putting in too much detail either. Just to Nice and light. So I'm just going to finish off um, this building in the background here and you can see how I've kept it nice and light, not a lot of detail, um, kept the, co the, the tonal differences, to tonal contrasts down to a bit of a minimum because I just, it wants to be there as a backdrop, a bit like a, a stage set where you have the backdrop behind the actors and so on. The shelter here is the main actor and this building here, no matter how gorgeous and gracious it is, um, is just supporting the main act as it were and just doesn't want to be made too contrast here too, um, too vivid, too, too much of because otherwise it will come forward and uh, there will be a competition between the main focal point which is the, the shelter with its clock tower and this building That's fine. Very, very tempting there to put in too much detail. Uh, what I will do is I'll let that dry and um, I will then, because you can still see some of the pencil marks, um, I'll rub out some of the pencil marks that I can see so it goes even further into the, uh, into the background. Now, so we've got that shape, we've got the main focal point shape. Uh, it's always important to make sure that you um, connect shapes together, don't have them as separate items. Um, and the, of course we can do that with the, uh, the grassy area. Um, so what I'm going to do is the larger brush just put in some lemon yellow. Bring that down. There are some trees on the right hand side, I'll put those in in a minute. And you see what I'm doing now is I'm connecting the two shapes together. Very, very tempting to put flat areas like grass or concrete or tarmac in as dark as they're shown in a photograph. It's always usually a mistake to do that. Um, remember that they are horizontal surfaces, therefore they're catching most more light than uh, other areas, other surfaces. So lemon yellow wet, and then once it's wet, I'm just dropping in some of this lovely um, Daniel Smith colour, the green Appetite Genuine, which is not, not a dirty green, but um, is not bright. And therefore I've been able to use it for, in a lot of my paintings um, straight from the tube, which is unusual for a green. So we've got a, 
bushy tree over here. I think I will just put that in just to balance the picture out. Working very much wet into it there, letting that explode. A little bit of burnt timber as well, low down. Not too much. There you go, that's alright. Um, just a little bit more emphasis there. Not too much. And slightly darker tone at the bottom of the bandstand here, just to make sure that's, that looks well and truly planted in the ground. It's important to make sure these things look as though they actually part of them. I'll extend that to the left as, as the light's coming from the right hand side so I'll extend that over there as part of the shadow. Now that could be the end of it almost but I think what I will do um, is put just a little bit of sky in. Now I'm not going to put in too much and I just want just a little bit of of the same blue I've used elsewhere. You can see how that water I've just put on the fresh water has caught some fountain pen ink on the side of the, um, the, the clock tower there and it's sort of spread a bit. I actually quite enjoy that. I'm, I'm, I, I just love the sort of sketchiness that that, that produces. Um, it, it just gives a sense of slight movement which I, I think is great. So I'm just dropping in these very, very, very simple sky. Um, so I've wetted the sky and now I'm dropping in some wet cobalt. And very often I'll, I won't do anything more than that. I won't add anything to the cobalt. I won't add any burnt sienna or, or even another blue. Um, sometimes, it, <laughs> as you can see here, I've picked up a bit of dirt from my palette. Um, it's just, I just, I want the sky to complement the building. I, want the, I don't want the, the the sky to take away from the building and so um, a simple sky is perfectly okay because we've got some blue up in the sky there obviously I'm just going to put a little bit down here too so that the two are talking to each other that's fine that's not going in as cobalt blue it is cobalt blue but because it's mixing with the wet grass it's producing a slightly different colour which is fine but the eye picks up the fact that there is a complementary colour anyway so that's that's fine that's good okay so I've dried off the, the painting especially this background uh, building I've rubbed out one or two of the pencil lines, especially in this sort of area here. I want this to be quite light. I want that area to be especially light because we've got the dark side of the um, the uh, shelter here. And so you get that contrast. I'm increasing the contrast, light and dark. Because this end is slightly closer to the eye than that end, this gets a little bit more definition, a little bit more tone, but not too much. That's important. Um, as you can see, put a little bit of sky in, uh, and now really to finish the, the uh, painting off, I'm going to add just a little bit more shadow, and for that I use um, a bit of violet and a bit of burnt umber. Um, and that's going to go very much here, yeah, a little bit over there as well just to enhance the three-dimensional effect. Yeah, that's probably all we want. So I've debated this a little bit as to whether I would bother with putting any splatter on, but I think it just needs a little bit of livening up. So I'm going to do just a little bit of but I'm using white gouache here, fairly wet, um, with this old size 4 brush. Uh, 
I usually start off with white, um, not too much. Gives the effect of blossom blowing around in the wind. And then the Turner effect, which is to use a bit of bright red, cat red or whatever, uh, do the same thing again. Slightly, I don't want too much of it. Especially around the focal point. And sometimes I do the same again with the third colour, which is the um, turquoise that I have. But I don't think I'll uh, use that. I don't think it's necessary. Some of it's gone to the sky. That's perfectly okay. Any of the, any areas that you don't want to have the splatter, you simply uh, mask off. Um, and there we have the finished painting. So contrast. Um, very tempting with a sort of picture where you've got your main object, the focal point, and you've got some lovely buildings or trees or whatever else behind um, to do what the photograph shows. Here we go. Where you've got the focal point, and then this you put in with just too much tonal contrast, too much um, detail work, and then you find in your painting that the uh, background object is fighting with the foreground object. Um, over who is the top dog, if you like. In painting, you find that um, when you look at the modern photographs like this, the modern photographs are just too accurate and they seem to have very little depth of field. There's a little bit of fuzziness there, I can see, as against this. So there is a little bit of depth of field there, but not as much as the human eye would normally have. And so you need to emphasize that. So that's done by making sure that you work on the focal point, nice and bright and warm and contrasty and then leave the background shape um, very obscure little detail um, and uh, with softer tones and so on but do connect your shapes together and you can do that with grass or whatever else is um, on the ground and also the sky too don't have separate objects painted so separately that they don't actually seem to be part of the the same uh, the same picture. Um, well, I hope you enjoyed watching that. I've certainly enjoyed uh, painting it. I'm quite pleased with that. Um, I hope that your painting goes extremely well. And thank you very much for for watching.